Block Chance Online Live is an online live streamed broadcast talk show about blockchain, AI, and green technology. Get involved in our community and share your opinions and ideas. Together, we can make a difference. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Block Chance Online Live. My name is Albert Pizzi, and I'm your host today. Our today's guest is Fabian Fugesteller. I'm really happy that he made it to our show. Um, he is well known to be the author of ERC20, which is a token standard that is used by thousands of projects. This token standard actually secured billions of dollars uh, over the last five years. Um, but he is also the author of ERC725, which is a blockchain-based identity standard, which we will also talk about today. Nowadays, he is uh, one of the founders of Luxo, um, which is a blockchain that is focused on community, fashion, and lifestyle. And we will talk about all these topics with him. Please say hello to the audience, Fabian. Hi. Yeah. Hello and welcome. One really essential building block in this is this universal profiles. It's basically smart corner based accounts that can gain reputation. And especially when you're a creator, when you're a creative person, when you're a YouTuber, when you're any person that has some kind of public appearance or a brand or a company, your account that issues create things, can receive money or can do things, can make statements is essential. And it's essential that this is independent and this is owned and controlled by yourself or by whoever you know that group is behind that. Web3 experience is easier than the Web2 experience. The world we live in right now, the lock-in of the world we live in right now is a literal hack. So you have to like sign up with email and password on every platform. Why do you have to do that? Because there's no decentralized or centralized or whatever government controlled account system that we can reuse our accounts. We always have to tell them again, hey, that's my email address. And by the way, please verify it. And they have to store me in their database and they have to do this with every single other website. If I take that account system out and put it on a blockchain and now I control it myself, not only can I log into many services without a password because I can sign messages with my keys that control my account, but I can also have 400% control. You could build social recovery in, you could have a third party being able to reset your password basically, or, you know, have a recovery key for you. You can have your friends having recovery keys for you. You can have multiple devices controlling the same account. So if you lose one, it's not a big deal because you have the other. There's just so many things we can now build and standardize on top of that accounts, just on the permission level alone. And then on top of this comes, once you have such a system, what startups and what other protocols can be built on top of this that include your account, you know, that includes such a blockchain based account. I mean, the, the sky is the limit here, really. Basically, we don't have mining, uh, we have staking and we are actually using the most decentralized proof of stake consensus that I would say exists today. So we can see, for example, the ETH 2.0 uh, beacon chain running with 80,000 validators. That's potentially possible on the uh, Luxo network as well. Plus you have smart contract execution. Plus, it's built in such a way that when the sharding solutions come in Ethereum, we can also have those sharding solutions in, in Luxor as well, as well. I guess the advantage of why we can go like this is because we don't have a package of $120 billion or $200 billion network with us. We can just start from scratch. We can be more flexible and we can be more agile. So that's literally a big thank you to Ethereum. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and the development around uh, ETH 2.0, because we can move that faster forward. And I guess also through that benefit and contribute back to the ETH 2.0 development. You know, I, as I see Ethereum, it's not just the Ethereum mainnet, it's this technology stack, it's the EVM, it's Solidity, it's all the tooling that's, that, and the knowledge that exists around it that really is Ethereum. And Ethereum mainnet is just one network that happened to turn out to be finance focused because of I guess there's actually one quick technical question here. Will we be, be paying gas on Luxo? Yes, we do pay gas on every blockchain, but as long as the network is not filled up, you know, gas prices don't go that high. <laughs> this is really just the reason, the only reason why Ethereum is expensive and Bitcoin too. Um, but on the other hand, there's a lot of transaction relay services and things we can build because a lot of the tokens we have are also meant for those kind of ecosystem uh, incentivization systems that then allow you to make dApps more easily without having to make people buy Lux first in order to interact on the network. So 
obviously app developers have to pay for the fees of their users, especially initially. And that's just the way how every app works. Yeah, Every app pays for servers, pays for Amazon and Google Cloud infrastructure. Without that, you see that upfront, this cost that's incurred. Uh, there's a lot of documentation, building the smart contracts, showing people how to do it, because on the end, it's not only about us building everything, but like about building the, the tools and the knowledge for others to use these things in the right way. There's a few internal projects, not all of that we can mention right now, that quite exciting, that will use not only obviously all the universal profiles and new uh, NFT standards that we are building, but it will also bring in nft use cases a lot of the nfts we currently have it's all about like creating like you know whatever digital file most of the time it's just an image and then say hey look i put it on the blockchain now it's valuable i mean i think there's a lot of philosophical questions we have to ask ourselves so what really is an nft what's valuable is like the ownership valuable or is the, the asset itself that's linked valuable should we allow access to the asset for everybody or should we somehow restrict it based on the ownership these are all questions that are not really discussed and they are completely open Open, most of the NFTs have very little usage. There's no function to it. While what you could do is, for example, digital fashion is a really good example because it's a 3D asset that could have a life. You know, it could have a life in a selfie, but it could have also life in VR or in a game. So that's like an NFT that somehow can have its life on its own. On the other hand, you could also have these NFTs being connected to other protocols. So only owning the NFT now gives you this benefit in these other protocols or this participation in some form or shape. So I think there's like so much room for exploration, what can happen. But we, again, we need first universal profiles for reputation to build up around these, these you know, the people who are creators independently of a website or a platform. And second, we need to have better standards around these NFTs so that they are more flexible, that they are more uh, readable by smart contracts, that uh, you can attach reputation system and protocols and all of kinds of things. In terms yeah. of like our roadmap, obviously the mainnet is the big one and the applications that we are building that uh, will release with it. The moment you have a network that goes into the creative direction, it's fully Ethereum compatible. I mean, literally almost every project that's currently paying high transaction fees on Ethereum will feel better being on Luxo, <laughs> especially when it runs like a Casper consensus. But it's about the standard adoption that really is, in my opinion, the most essential. The standard adoption of ERC20 created the blockchain space we have today. It's just the impact this standard had. So that will be, in my opinion, a bigger shift than even the smartphone had. AR and VR together. And this world needs its own laws of nature. And these laws of nature will be governed by blockchain technology. Because that's the only way of how you create a law of nature in technology is you use blockchain or consensus-driven technology. Because there cannot be one single entity or party controlling the show. I guess really right now it's not so big yet that will be actually even bigger in the next few months and years is these cultural currencies. It's like tokenized communities or tokens that are not in the purpose of I'm buying a token to somehow, you know, let it go up in value, but I'm earning a token that means something that either means I participated or that means I'm a part of something or that I believe in something. And this is something that might be more valuable than money while not being sellable. Because if for example, I'm a big fan of a certain, let's say, musician, and I somehow accumulate a lot of his tokens, coins, points, whatever, um, because I've been in a lot of concerts, and this is something I cannot buy or sell, then that reputation, meaning I have been on almost every of his concerts, whatever, is invaluable. It's something that you cannot buy for money because you cannot replicate the past doing the same thing. So we will have these reputational and cultural currencies that will determine like our status or our beliefs and, and our influence and our understanding of each other. I think these will have massive influence on decision making, on like who is a decision maker, who is an influencer, how our decisions are made. You can build whole voting systems around this stuff.